Since the first three episodes aired of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's Netflix documentary, the couple has faced a wave of backlash over some of the claims they've made about Meghan adjusting to royal life and their struggles with the family's acceptance of Meghan in general. With the other three episodes out now, more is sure to come, so let's talk about some of the claims that have been disputed so far. I'm Adam Andrews the Where Are They Now, and let's jump into it. Starting with even the trailer for the documentary itself, some apparent lies were already called out. Prince Harry claimed lies were told to protect his brother, Prince William, and suggested the couple, Harry and Meghan, were victims of institutional gaslighting. In response to that, Dickie Arbiter, who served Queen Elizabeth from 1988 to 2000, has debunked some of the allegations made by the couple and noted the couple are sending mixed messages saying, quote, there are more holes in their story than a colander, which to be lighthearted for a moment is honestly a hilarious way of putting it. Dickie also had issue though when the Duchess of Sussex also revealed that their security was being pulled. Dickie gave a pretty good explanation saying that was due to the couple moving to the United States and taxpayers won't pay for them to live in America, which I can't really argue with that one. That makes a lot of sense. In the documentary, Meghan also alleged that Kensington Palace advised her to not invite her niece, Ashley Hale, to her wedding. Ashley is the daughter of Meghan's half-sister, Samantha Markle, who has had fallings out with the Duchess after the huge Oprah Winfrey interview that Harry and Meghan did back in March of 2021. Speaking on this claim though, a source close to the royal family told Nine Honey, quote, we never gave any advice, steer, or guidance on who of her family or friends should or shouldn't come to to her wedding. Another insider added, Meghan didn't want the media to know about Ashley. No one on earth would have said don't invite family to the wedding. That's a complete and utter lie. We wanted more family there to make it look less weird for her. On the topic of this though, if you thought Pierce Morgan would not be involved in this video, then you should have known better. Joining Pierce on his show to discuss the first three episodes of the documentary was Sunday Times editor Roya Nika and her former royal correspondent Michael Cole. After Pierce asked Roya, for the truth about Meghan's claim, Roya replied, That was not the account that two people who worked very closest with Meghan and Harry told me, both of whom had very specific recollections of that conversation with Meghan. The editor told Pierce that it was Meghan who told the palace she didn't want her niece to attend the wedding to avoid exposing her to media scrutiny. At another point, the Duchess of Sussex claimed that she received no training when entering into the royal family. She compared it to the princess diaries saying, quote, Joining this family, I knew that there was a protocol for how things were done. And do you remember that old movie, The Princess Diaries with Anne Hathaway? There's no class and some person who goes sit like this, cross your legs like this, use this fork, don't do this, curtsy then, wear this kind of hat. It doesn't happen, so I needed to learn a lot. Which, um, first of all, I kind of hate that she said The Princess Diaries is old because now I feel old. That movie came out in 2001, more than 20 years ago. I hate everything. But back to the point of the claim of no training. An insider has since disputed Meghan's claim, telling Nine Honey again, and they revealed that Meghan was given a 30 point dossier by Prince Harry's then private security, Ed Lane Fox, which included various experts who could help Meghan on various aspects of life, including the Constitution, ladies in waiting, fashion, public life, and other things. The claims by Meghan follow allegations that Meghan rejected Queen Elizabeth's offer to be guided by Sophie, the Countess of Wessex. Sophie is another member of the royal family that did not come from royalty herself. The book, Elizabeth, an Intimate Portrait by Giles Brandreth, who is a friend of the royal family, says, quote, The Queen, who of course had seen it all before, understood that Harry's girl might find adjusting to royal life challenging to begin with, as she put it. To help Meghan, the Queen suggested that her daughter-in-law, Sophie Wessex, would be an ideal mentor. And the Queen even apparently said, quote, Sophie can help show you the ropes. The author continued on writing that Meghan apparently made it very clear that she did not need help as she had Harry. On top of that, the Duchess reportedly also rejected advice from Camilla, who was the Duchess of Cornwall at that time. So it seems that Meghan didn't accept the help that was offered, if it was actually offered at all, which I think it probably was. Viewers also spotted another problem with Harry and Meghan's recollection of their first meeting. Harry revealed in the first episode how he met Meghan, but it appeared to be contradictory to past versions of that story. And on top of that, fans spotted issues with the pair's new tale of his proposal as well. In a previous interview about their engagement in 2017, Harry claimed that he had proposed to the Duchess in the kitchen on a standard, typical night in their cottage. But in the new series, Harry says he 
proposed in a candlelit garden. At yet another point in the documentary, Harry claims he was blocked from seeing the Queen, which goes against what he told Oprah Winfrey during the 2021 interview. During that interview, Harry said, quote, She said I have no plans for the week, why don't you come up and we'll have tea. Stay the night, you and Meghan. With Meghan adding that they were on their way to Heathrow Airport and an urgent message came through saying that the Queen was busy, which was confirmed by the Queen herself who told Harry she didn't know that she was supposed to be busy when Harry called her. Now in the second installment, Meghan has revealed why she opted for a trio of brightly colored outfits during the royal couple's farewell tour of the UK. Speaking in episode 5, Meghan said, Until that last week in the UK, I rarely wore color and I never wanted to upstage or ruffle any feathers so I tried to blend in. But I wore a lot of color that week. I felt, well, let's just look like a rainbow. But there are tons of photographs taken from many different royal outings over the years that prove that Meghan regularly wore many bright colors all the time. This is kind of a weird one. I don't know why anyone would lie about that. It's just bright colors. Kind of strange. There was also another point where Harry and Meghan spoke about being moved into Nottingham Cottage, a house in the grounds of Kensington Palace in London, which had previously been where Prince William and Princess Kate lived with Prince George. Speaking on this point, he said, As far as people were concerned, we were living in a palace, but we were living in a cottage on palace grounds. For this one, I gotta say, one, you're living on the grounds of a palace, so shut up, you can't really complain about anything here. But two, the pair seemed to forget that before they moved in, this cottage was Prince William and Kate Middleton's place when they had their first born son before moving in October 23rd to apartment 1A in Kensington Palace. It's not like a crappy place by any stretch of the imagination, so I, this one just seems kind of meh. I don't really like it. A lot of these points do not look good for the couple, and it does not help their situation, but they were going to receive backlash no matter what they did or said, and some people have gone to great lengths to try and find something to be upset about. For example, a Another kind of kind of ridiculous criticism of the couple also came about from the documentary. People on the internet are claiming that the setting of the documentary's interviews wasn't actually at their home, and was instead at a bigger, more costly $33 million mansion which is currently on the market located near the Sussex residence. Internet sleuths who care way too much about these things noticed that the photos of the property on the real estate page were the same as the backgrounds in some of the documentary scenes. Okay, so let's entertain this criticism and ask ourselves, hmm, why would a different house have been used? Well, outside of the possibility that it was actually their house, one, the couple may have wanted to come across in a more lavish manner, therefore, by showing a property that had more opulence, it would have shown that they were living comfortably. If you think that makes them fake, then that's fair, but no one in the royal family isn't. But the second point, the internet sleuths who looked up all this information kind of proved the fact that it could simply have been due to security concerns. The couple may not have wanted to disclose their exact location, as well as the contents and layout of their own home to the whole world. But if we need a third point, a third point could be, it could have totally just been a production choice made for a variety of factors that have nothing to do with Harry and Meghan. Whatever the reason is, people on social media made their position very clear that they think the couple was trying to put on a persona that did not reflect their actual lives. I will agree that it doesn't help their situation, obviously, but I don't know about that one. The thing with this story is that the people who are longtime fans of the royal family absolutely hate Meghan, and they are quick to fight any claims she makes. Never once have I heard a royal family supporter agree with anything that Meghan says. But on the other hand, people who support Meghan or just don't like the idea of the royal family do the complete opposite, believing most of what Meghan says without even questioning it. And no matter your opinion, you are bound to run into large groups of people who will fight tooth and nail to disagree with you, no matter what. And I can already already see the comments now who are going to disagree with that statement itself. Some comments about the topics that I have seen are just way too upset about the whole thing in my opinion. This guy James wrote, Prince Harry is an absolute embarrassment to the royal family. Him and Meghan should be stripped of any titles they have. The Queen would be devastated about the lies and deceit coming from the pair of them. People's feelings are intense on this subject, but despite that, we do want to hear your well thought out and non-combative opinions, so let's start a discussion down below. But that's all the time I have left. I'm Adam Andrews with Where Are They Now. Stay safe and well informed out there. I'll catch you on the flippy flop. Peace out.